the University of Melbourne had a notice in the paper saying anyone who has goats, serious goats, um, will they get in touch because we need to know something about them? Well, they actually did kill two whole herds of my best milkers with the drugs because none of us knew. We just did not know. And that was when I first started asking questions and it was Bob Douglas Hill. We'd got an analysis from him, very basic. The only th interesting was the thing he showed lithium still and um, put dolomite on that land and this plethora of sick and dying goats and mastitis ridden goats sort of just cleared up. And one thing led to another, just always ask questions. I'd get a, I'd, we took some goats down, we had three goats come in, and they were all crook, and I took, put in the, I'd take them in the combi, I'd take them down to Werribee, and they tested and they said, oh, they've all got leukaemia, leave them here. And I said, I can't do that, they belong to other people, they were sent to me for you to find out what was wrong. So I took them home, put them on my good paddocks, didn't give them much vitamin C or stuff because I hadn't really got found out about that then. And four weeks later I take them back to Werribee and they hadn't got leukaemia. And Prof Blood's looking at me, he said, you don't, well, leukaemia just doesn't disappear. I said, well, you diagnosed it and you've just diagnosed these, where's it gone? You know, <laughs> we had these sort of run-ins, you see. Anyway, he, he said, write a thesis. So I would sit down and I would write a thesis to the best of my ability. And this happened again and again. And especially with the use of using vitamin B12 for animals with cobalt collapses. I think in the end I would send the thesis to Mary and his wife, you see, and say, sit over Doug while he reads this, you see. So <laughs> and Doug would be reading going, hmm, hmm. <laughs> But he eventually had to put up with the fact that uh, I was leading them in another yeah. direction. Yeah.